The triangle exposure consists of shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. It is usually seen on a camera that is on a manual mode. Hey what's up guys, I'm Joseph Ryan Bate, your tech warrior from the Monk Siglo. Today we're going to talk about the triangle exposure. The triangle exposure consists of shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. It is usually seen on a camera that is on a manual mode. This tree affects the exposure or the light that comes into our image or on a video. By the way, this triangle exposure also applies on photography. But since we do a lot of talking heads and interviews, we will focus on the video side. In photography, shutter speed determines the amount of time that the shutter is open. I think this is similar on cameras or phone that has timer wherein you expose your shutter like let's say around 5 seconds and then after that 5 seconds you can already have your image captured. That's it. There is this term long exposure wherein you open your shutter speed for a long time let's say it's 30 seconds or 20 seconds this is usually used by astrophotographers or some enthusiasts who want to capture a stunning images just like the milky way a stunning photo of a waterfalls or at night if you do wanted to capture a streak of lights of course, you can go into a at least faster shutter speed that eliminates that motion blur. Example on portraits, it is usually at around 1 out of 100 so that you can get rid of that motion blur. In videography or in films, there is this rule that they follow which is the 180 degree shutter rule where you double your shutter speed based on your frame rates. Right now, I am shooting at a 30 FPS and my shutter speed is on 60. If you do want it to shoot at 60 FPS, then what you need is 120 shutter speed. It's always double the shutter speed based on your FPS. That's the 180 degree shutter rule. The next element in triangle exposure is the aperture. I have this Mikey 35mm, it's a manual lens, you can see this, the opening of the blades going from wide to narrow, it opens and close. If you do wanted to get that shallow depth of field, then you would wanted to consider getting a lens that has a low aperture, but you can do get this shallow depth of field depending on the distance of your subject. To the background because depth of field is basically just getting all the focus on your subject that will separate your subject to the background and this is where your background becomes blurry and the more it's open the better shallow depth of field the blurry it gets and those light that you see they become like circles or also known as bokeh and yes of course it gets blurry now you have also a narrow depth of field which is usually used on landscape wherein there's no blurry background but everything in the frame is focused here's a comparison of a 1.8 2.8 5.6 and 8 so as you can see 1.8 2.8 5.6 basically have a blurry background that is focused on your subject and your background become blurry and on around 8 11 22 there's no blurry background and that's it now let's go to the ISO ISO is the sensitivity of the camera's sensor to light 
So meaning, if you have a higher ISO, the more it is sensitive to the surface of light. So basically, ISO is, let's say, the last resort. If you don't have enough light, then you will bump your ISO to the highest or at least on the ISO that will compensate the lack of light in your video or in your image or in the photo. And it is usually the first one that most beginners will see and adjust so when they, they lack lighting. ISO is similar on the, our phone's brightness. When you increase the brightness, there's more light coming through. But as you bump higher your ISO, you're gonna get some green or noise. I think it is because the camera is compensating for the lack of light. Uh, the more lack of light and, and you bump it up, the grainy it gets. But if there is enough light and you did bump it a little, you won't get that grainy. In our case, we usually limit it to at least 800. But there are times that we go for a 1600 ISO or 3200 or even the 6400. But then again, if you do lack light, don't rely too much on your ISO unless you wanted to get that green or noise. By the way, this video was recorded in 30 fps, 60 shutter speed, 1.8 aperture, and on a 100 ISO. The reason why I am shooting at 100 ISO is because the light is enough, there's, there's enough lighting. 1.8 is the lowest aperture of this, which is the Canon 50mm a 1.8. Just what I said, it does depends on the distance of your subject into your background. In this triangle exposure, there is no most important and there is no least important. That is why they did call it triangle exposure. Everything in it is important. You can actually do disregard it. Cameras does have a special feature or a certain dials that allows you to just manually adjust the two options and the camera will automatically adjust based on what you wanted or what is needed but then again triangle exposure is usually seen on a manual mode i say pretty much if you know the triangle exposure and you're pretty much good to go because again it cover up the shutter speed the aperture and the iso then the more you use a camera the more you learn about it because i just ask always that i'm going to say is that uh, this is a continuous process you need to learn and learn you need to study study and then accept the fact that you will eventually made a mistake this episode consists of a lot of three takes and if not three takes in this just one video I have many 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 mistakes and I just keep it rolling I just keep the camera rolling and correcting myself and then yeah if you if you notice that there's a lot of jump cuts like <laughs> uh, I zoom it in I zoom it in or zoom it out to make it at least have at least it's like it's not that awkward cuts. I, I use this technique when I needed to cut something and I zoom it in and then zoom it out. I make a lot of mistakes because honestly, I am not used to speak like this. I am not used to do a talking head and I don't have that confidence to do much of this but Right now, I'm doing this because I wanted to, wanted to really learn from it and I wanted to share it to you guys and hopefully this video helps and at least inspires you to do more. This is Joseph Ryan Batty, your tech warrior from Lumang Signo, saying, keep on studying and learn from your mistakes. Maximize what you have.
we're going to talk about the long exposure that is usually seen on a camera.